That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about All About My Mother, which was just released on into the Criterion Collection on January 28, 2020. Um, uh, it was originally released in 1999. It was Almodovar's first time competing at Cannes. He won Best Director. And of course, it went on to win Best uh, Foreign Language Film at the Oscars that year. What is this film about? Uh, motherhood. It's an homage to motherhood. Okay, so what do we know Almodovar for? The one movie I can think of is Airplane? No. Ooh, uh, no, I'm so yeah. exci no, so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I mean, you like the Pointer Sisters too, you know. That's what I thought of as soon as I said Airplane. Okay. Um, yes, and you've also seen Flower of My Secret because we had a movie night for that. Okay. As well. I don't remember Which, that. Okay. Uh, so I'm so excited. I, then and then I, then flower. I guess the flower of my secret. And th this is all you've seen of his. Okay. What are his biggest movies? Um, I think this is actually my favorite uh, of his films, and I think it kicked off a. Okay. A, 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 to me, this is his richest period because after the, the, this, he did Abla Cornea, Talk to her. Okay. Um, uh, Volver, uh, Bad Education, uh, the '90s. You know, he had uh, Time Me Up, Time Me Down, Live Flesh, uh, Women on the Verge of the What is his most popular film? Probably, well, Pain and Glory is pretty popular this year, which Antonio Banderas was just nominated for an Oscar in. Okay. But uh, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown is very popular. He, he has several very uh, iconic titles. Okay. Bad Habits. I know he's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes. I'm just getting anxious because every time you say the name of the film, I have to find it and pop it up. Oh, well... <laughs> Those, anyway. are, those are the biggins, the biggins. Anyway, so this film was made in 1999. It stars... Cecilia Roth as Manuela, um, Marissa Paredes as Huma Rojo, uh, Antonia San Juan as Agrado, Penelope Cruz as Rosa, uh, Rosa Maria Sarda as Rosa's mother, uh, Tony Canto as Lola, and uh, Candela Pina as Nina. So, I really did like this movie. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the star of the show is Angrata? Agrado. Agrado, sorry, Agrado. Uh, who, who I'm assuming is a trans woman mm -hmm. and also plays a trans, uh, trans sex worker. Trans feminine prostitute, yeah. Yes. Uh, she's captivating. Mm -hmm. There's even a scene in the film where she um, has to come up on stage. Well, we should describe the plot first, but. She, there, there is a scene in the film that sort of demonstrates, I think, what she is in the film, mm -hmm. which is kind of just like this breath of fresh air. But anyway, the film revolves around Manuela. Mm -hmm. Who is living in Madrid with her 17-year-old uh, son, Esteban, who dreams of being a writer. Uh, it's his birthday. Uh, we get the sense that there are things she hasn't told him about his father, uh, who she had met in Barcelona a uh, year and hasn't talked to him since. Uh, they go to a performance of A Streetcar Named Desire for his birthday wish, uh, which stars Marissa Paredes as Huma Ro Rojo. Uh, and he waits to get an autograph in the rain and chases after her cab and ends up dying in a, a car crash, which sends Manuela in a spiral to go back to Barcelona and track down uh, the boy's father to tell him what happened. Yes, and so, Right after he dies, um, she agrees to let his heart be donated. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she works in the hospital. So she's able to find the records of the person who uh, received her son's heart. So she kind of goes there to Pri try Prior to going to Barcelona. Yeah. yeah. And then while she's in uh, Barcelona, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where she uh, reunites with a, a grotto. A grotto. Uh, they just have a lovely dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so Penelope Cruz is a nun who tries to help them out. She discovers she's pregnant. She became pregnant by Lola, who is also a trans woman who impregnated Manuela. Yes. So the dead boy's father father is this trans uh, woman who also impregnated Penelope Cruz like 17 years after the fact. <laughs> Uh, but he's HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So Penelope Cruz is HIV positive. Um, she dies, but we don't know if it's because of the delivery or if she dies from like complications from AIDS. We don't know. The baby, 
I think because they didn't understand HIV maybe that well in 1999, they say that he's been cured of it, but maybe it's just that he never had it. I, I think I don't think it's that they didn't understand it. I think that that's a, an actual plot mechanism. Which oh, we, we can. Re I, I think as we talk about what the film's doing, maybe well, we're not gonna talk for too long. So what do you? <laughs> I'll tell you what I really liked about the film. I think that I really like seeing so. The film feels ve like it could, like on paper it'd be very dramatic, very soap opery, kind of all over the place and crazy. But the filmmaker does a really good job of taking sort of an insane plot and making it seem very um, palatable, mm -hmm. empathetic, poignant, poignant, sweet. So much so that these characters who normally we would look at like, oh my god, they just seem so normal and regular. Mm -hmm. And even the relationship between Manuela and a grotto is it just seems so effortless yes yeah. and I, I i see that in his last two films at least to a, a return to some themes but that don't feel as effortless to me this is his most circian film this is the soapiest on paper this is the soapiest of cirques and the tawdriest of any telenovela and yeah he makes that marriage work effortlessly it's it's uh it just everything feels like it's in it, in its place. All the colors, all the colors of the room, and this is a very vibrant looking film, which was um, lensed by Afonso Beto, who also did Live Flesh for him previously. Um, I so this is an a, it's dedicated to a, a handful of actresses that have played mothers: Romy Schneider, uh, Jenna Rollins, uh, I forget who else, Betty Davis, obviously, because All About Eve is a theme uh, in here. And it, it, his mother died this year, so it's all about motherhood, and it, it's a blending of fact and fiction. Because if we're approaching this film as a piece of art, this is about this is art that's imitating life, that's imitating art, that's imitating life. There's so many layers to this film, because you all the texts that are brought up vocally, like Capote's music for music for chameleons, his late period piece that uh, was arguable whether that was fact or fiction because it was supposed to be autobiographical uh, it is like this film. Uh, the All About Eve business in relation to Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire, uh, all of those are interchangeable as are the roles of women like mother, sister, um, lesbianism, um, anybody who wants to be a woman or wishes to identify as feminine is and about the possibilities of a feminine future. Because this came in 1999 as well. And to me, this is still um, miles ahead of trans representations we see in American cinema. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it, there's, it's, it's a little problematic because the main trans woman is, they're making light of, like, like she makes light of herself a lot and so I feel like, you know, if... But, uh, but she's also in that role, because Lamotivar often does that, where he has, a, like, uh, Rosie De Palma plays that often in his films, like this kind of weirdo character that is comic relief. I'm not bothered by it because I think that actor has ownership of the character she's playing, and that character is choosing to sort of... You know, there's a scene where she talks about her penis and people wanting to see her penis, and I... And how she has to keep it... And, because that's how she was able to work make money worker. right so I thought that was very effective um, so I don't but but I can see how people have, would have problems with it I think why it's so refreshing is that these characters from the nun because the nun is kind of the one who fucks up the most mm -hmm. like this bitch is having sex when she shouldn't be she's having sex with like a trans woman who gets her pregnant and gives her HIV. I mean, that's like, you really are making poor decisions. But then the main trans woman at Grotto, she's kind of like making good choices, right? Like she's, we first meet her being attacked by a John and Manuela saves her. And, you know, in most scenarios, you would think that she would fight like, no, I want to be here. Leave me alone. This is my job. But she realized like, no, let's get out of here. Yeah. And oh, no, I should get a job. Oh, let's go to the nun. I want to do non-sex work. And then she gets a real job and then she does a good job. And then she has a scene where she gets to step in on stage um, because she becomes the assistant of Huma. Mm -hmm. um, so like she captivates an audience by just giving like a talk. So it's like, I think that's why it's so refreshing. That the character who you would think would just be a fucking mess is actually kind of like the strongest one, mm -hmm. the most reasonable, thoughtful one. Um, so that's lovely. 
Uh, you, you also you like Cecilia Roth a lot too. Which one is she? Manuela, the lead. She's beautiful. She kind of reminds me of like a Spanish Kylie Minogue. She's Argentinian actually. Oh. In her, in they wrote they incorporated. Oh, uh, yeah, a Latina uh, Kylie Minogue. They incorporated that into the film because she's her character's from Argentina as well. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, yeah. I think this is a great movie. I think um, it's about performance versus reality. There are so many like doublings up, you know, because Esteban almost gets hit by a car in the beginning and then actually does get hit by a car. And and how um, Manuela actually works, like her job is to um, film these videos where doctors talk about donating organs. And then she ends up having <laughs> to ends up donate having her to... own sons. Yeah. So I would give so I would give this film four out of five. Mm -hmm. The reason I don't think it's perfect is because there is a lot going on, so I don't feel connected to anyone. So even like when Manuela's son dies and she's in the hospital, that scene feels a little frenetic. Like she kind of just she has like a very quick breakdown and then she comes back and then she signs every so much is happening mm -hmm. that I just felt it felt very um, superficial. Sure. But not in a bad way per se. It's just that I, I like I don't feel super connected to the film. It's definitely something I could watch again and again, um, mainly for Agrado. I, I really like seeing her on screen. But yeah, it doesn't feel very deep. Oh, see, I. I it's layered, so I guess like you I, know, I, seven I, layer dip is deep, I guess, but it's not very oh, rich. Boy. Like you I, know. See, I disagree. I think it is very rich because if you really are involved, it is rich. I shouldn't have said that. I was trying to think of something clever to come up with seven layer dip, mm -hmm. but it's just you know, there's a lot going on. It's very well done. It's, it's very well there, thought out. It is worth because even Agrado says early on because she's talking about her Chanel, her faux Chanel outfit, and she's saying the only real things that I have are my feelings. This film is all about performance versus reality. This film won an Academy Award for Best, Best Foreign Language film. film. I feel like Agrado should have received a nomination. Yeah. I thought we, she was excellent. We weren't quite there yet. I thought she was excellent. Yeah, I would recommend excellent. this movie just to watch her. Uh, she's also become a director of her, in her own right. She's directed two films. What's her name? Uh, Antonia San Juan. Oh, good job, girl. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just beautiful and... Even I really liked her hair, like mm -hmm. just her characterization. But just like a blunt, matter of fact, characterization of a, a, a trans man or a trans woman, trans, trans feminine woman. woman. Um, the, like the only other film, it's actually from this period and from a Mexican filmmaker, Arturo Ripstein's The Place Beyond Limits, The Place with No Limits. Like, though, you still don't really see trans people playing trans characters like this in the English language. Sure. What would you give this film? I'd give it four to five stars. I'd give Criterion's release four to five. Um, for the extra features, there's a 2012 52 minute documentary about the making of the film. There's a 2019 um, Q&A uh, session uh, post screening of the film that's about 48 minutes. And then there's a 1999 TV spot that features Almodovar and his mother uh, before she died. Okay, take a deep breath. Are you done? <laughs> I'm done. Great, bye. Bye.